Okay, uh, so uh, Jaihin and uh, good evening to everyone, all the distinguished panelists and uh, the participants. Uh, whatever Upasana ji said is uh, nothing unusual and uncommon. And uh, we've all gone through the same experience of having apprehensions about this program, about how uh, effectively we can implement these human values into the curriculum, into our lives and the campus. Uh, but uh, I would make an attempt to go over what uh, our experience has been over the last 10 years of this journey. And possibly to some extent, uh, you may believe or start uh, seeing the practicality of the entire scheme. Uh, so before that, uh, let me convey my sincere thanks to uh, all the organizers of this workshop uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts and our experiences in this very, very eminent forum, as mentioned, of uh, vice chancellors, directors of various colleges and coordinators of UHP programs and uh, other senior faculty members. So today I'll very briefly go over our journey from the time uh, when we were actually, like most of us, not aware of the role and importance of value education. Then I'll talk about how we got initiated and progressed uh, towards integrating this uh, human values, not just in our curriculum, but in our uh, entire ecosystem. I'll also go over some of our specific efforts and finally the outcome, some quantifiable changes and uh, transformation that uh, we noticed in our students, faculty, staff, and also in our institution in general. So I've been uh, heading this institution, as Upasana Ji said, since 2004. But our uh, journey um, towards integrating universal human values actually began in uh, 2009. And uh, I now believe that uh, human values uh, should be, have to be made a very essential and inseparable part of uh, our technical education. And it should be, it has to be given an equal importance and uh, truly interwoven into the entire scheme of things. I also believe that it is equally important uh, for all of us to be aware of the present state actually that we are in, what is missing and what is deficit, and to be truly intrinsically convinced of the need, because uh, unless we move with total conviction, we won't be able to implement uh, these programs very effectively. So just to spend a few minutes on that, uh, I think all of us are aware that our education system presently is uh, primarily and predominantly skill-based. Our focus, uh, most of ours, has been um, on good results, academic excellence, or maybe to some extent on uh, all-round development of our students in terms of sports, cultural events, and so on. So primarily we teach our students how to do things in various fields of technology, but uh, uh, somehow we miss out uh, the whys and what of what is actually uh, valuable and worthwhile to achieve. And now we believe that uh, this lack of uh, right understanding has made uh, us and of course our students truly believe that uh, physical facilities are uh, sufficient for happiness and prosperity. And this kind of misunderstanding, lack of uh, importance of uh, relationships along with physical facilities has led to uh, conflicts, contradictions, at individual uh, and relations and society level, as well as uh, depletion of natural resources and so on. So basically taking cognizance of these uh, things in our society and students, our university uh, presently called Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University, at that time UP Technical University, introduced a full-fledged uh, compulsory uh, audit course on human values and professional ethics uh, from the session 2009-10. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah. So, and uh, over the last 10 years, since 2009, we have come a long way. And uh, now, not only we have we run this particular course as a full-fledged graduate course in second year, uh, we are offering also uh, some advanced courses on value education as open electives in our third and uh, fourth year of curriculum and uh, of course there were many challenges uh, and apprehensions in the beginning as uh, some of us are feeling even now and uh, i'll just go over them briefly so firstly and i think equally important to get over 
was what we discussed in the beginning, whether values could actually be taught at all. I mean, whether values could be inculcated through teaching in a course. And uh, if uh, introducing a course and these kind of things were truly the right approach to effectively bring about whatever transformation or change we wanted in the conduct and behavior of our students as such. We were also not sure whether the professional engineering students would uh, accept such a program as a humanities or a general human values course. And uh, rightly so, we also faced initially the problem of uh, very poor interest by students, uh, poor attendance in the human values classes and so on. Another challenge that uh, all of you may also have faced or will be facing is to prepare a good number of engineering faculty for conducting these courses. Because uh, in our own experience, uh, when we began this program, the faculty were not uh, very, very keen to get involved into this and to be deputed for those uh, eight days uh, faculty development programs at IIT Kanpur and other places. And uh, even the ones who came were not, uh, they were happy with uh, whatever they learned and the, they enjoyed uh, participating in that FTP. But they were still not very comfortable in conducting this one full semester program based on that one week's training. So uh, primarily, I believe, because they needed to change their approach and methodology of teaching as such. Because human values course uh, truly requires uh, not just uh, passing information uh, as uh, in some of our technical curriculum, but it needs, uh, you know, we need to facilitate uh, some kind of a self-exploration and uh, experiential validation uh, through natural acceptance in our students. So the faculty did uh, take some time to uh, reorient uh, their teaching methodology. So these were the initial challenges uh, which uh, slowly got uh, overcome by us. But in addition uh, to these challenges, we also realized, uh, and I think all of us uh, should take cognizance of this fact, that these courses uh, can only help to uh, bring awareness, to sensitize students about uh, values, but uh, truly are not uh, enough to bring about the desired change. They themselves cannot uh, do the total thing. So uh, we adopted and we all have to adopt a more holistic approach. Uh, you know, like we have in Gurukuls where uh, students live together in harmony with each other, with nature and so on. So in addition to the courses, what we did was we took some steps actually to make the students aware of their responsibility towards uh, the society as well as towards the nature. And um, since the values uh, had to be learned experientially, we also worked towards creating a very supportive uh, environment uh, somehow in our campus to reinforce whatever was actually being uh, passed or proposed in these uh, human value uh, programs as such. So I will now briefly go over uh, some of the efforts from the beginning and also the activities uh, that we undertook uh, over the last 10 years to make this program a success and to be able to reach the stage that we are in today. So first and foremost, uh, to start with, I think uh, what we did and what we should all be doing. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? that uh, we ensured that uh, most of our senior people in the college, all the deans, all the heads of departments, all the senior faculty, including me, that we ourselves underwent a formal eight days uh, faculty development program in this human values. And in fact, uh, all my senior people have also undergone the refresher course. In addition to this, initially when the program started, of course, it was not that HODs uh, were the first to do this, but we deputed senior and elderly faculty to do these programs and to teach the students uh, to bring about uh, uh, more uh, sincere and uh, serious approach and conviction at all levels within the faculty and the students. And it actually worked to a large extent. As far as the faculty members are concerned, uh, today now in our college for the last few years, we made it uh, compulsory for all faculty, you know, whether they have to be involved in this teaching or conducting this curriculum or not. In our college, uh, it is compulsory to every faculty member to at least uh, undergo this eight days uh, FDP on uh, universal human values at the earliest after they join our college. And as a result, uh, you can see in the slide, uh, nearly 90% of our faculty members have undergone this 
eight days workshop over the last uh, so many years. And uh, all of them are eligible to conduct, to take part in this uh, uh, initial uh, student induction program, as well as to conduct what the AICT calls uh, the UHP2 program as such. Not only that, uh, nearly half of these faculty members own their own now, uh, which is not compulsory, but they've undergone uh, the higher level, uh, either level two or the refresher course as well. And 16 of our faculty members have also undergone the level three uh, more advanced uh, faculty development program. And I must also mention that in addition to just the faculty members, because uh, there is nearly equal population of non-teaching staff, the administrative staff, the registrars, the accounts, and also the lab staff in every college. So we also ensure that all our uh, non-teaching staff also undergo at least a three days workshop on universal human values within our college. And uh, let me share that some of these people on their own now have also volunteered and done the full uh, one week FTP as well, even though not required for them. So we also now have uh, three fully qualified uh, resource persons and six co-facilitators in our college. And I must mention that it is uh, you know, developing these resource person who are now capable of training the trainer, that is to conduct FTPs for the other faculty members. Uh, it is actually a very long and a, a phased uh, process, but very well structured. And I do believe that it is essential. Uh, you have to take time, but I think uh, if all of us, if in all institutions, we are able to develop uh, a few uh, resource persons or co-facilitators, we would become to a large extent self-sufficient to spread uh, this value education in our own campuses ourselves without any external uh, help, which is obviously not available all the time. And uh, let me just um, uh, go through uh, very briefly the process for uh, developing uh, the resource persons. Can I have the next slide now? Yeah. So to start with, uh, you know, for a proper understanding uh, within self, uh, one has to uh, go through various cycles of experiential validation. So it is necessary for the faculty to have undergone level one, level two, level three, and also, if possible, a one month course for him to qualify to be a resource person. In addition to these workshops, uh, to gain the required experience and expertise, uh, what we do is uh, we first deploy them depute them as uh, local program coordinators and observers during these eight days FTP. So whereby they observe how this program is being conducted, what kind of questions are being uh, put up by various participants. So they, they, they sit through a few programs. And after that, they graduate to be co-facilitators. That is, uh, they are permitted, they are asked now to conduct some of the sessions under the guidance of the main resource person. And after they become, uh, confident, experienced, and competent enough, then uh, as such, uh, they qualify to be the resource person who can independently conduct uh, these faculty development programs. So today um, in our university, for example, uh, AKTU, we have about uh, 50 such resource persons available. And that is how this program is being successfully conducted in most of our institutions. I'll now talk about some of the efforts uh, by us to increase the effectiveness other than making the faculty members and the staff uh, exposed or to undergo these courses. Uh, what we do is uh, we regularly conduct, can I have the next slide please? So we regularly conduct uh, uh, weekly uh, sharing sessions for the interested faculty and also fortnightly sharing sessions for the non-teaching staff. In fact, uh, in our institution, uh, there are afternoons fixed. So every afternoon, there is some batch or the other who is involved in this sharing, sharing session all five days in a week, because these are done in very small groups and are uh, guided by the resource person. We have found that these discussions have been uh, very, very effective and very useful in uh, not only increasing and bringing about a deeper understanding but also a real change in the conduct and behavior of uh, the faculty members. In addition, we also uh, conduct some book reading and uh, doubt clearing sessions for the faculty who during that semester are actually teaching this uh, 
UHV2 program to the students. And these sessions are very helpful in clarifying some of the doubts and also the questions that at times get raised by students, which that particular faculty may not be very sure or comfortable in clarifying. And in addition to these sharing sessions, we also started about three years back uh, uh, one week's workshop uh, for our students in the hostings. And uh, this is for two hours in a day on very specific uh, themes uh, which would interest the students, even the students who have undergone this entire course for one full semester. And uh, I'm very happy to share that uh, this was an initiative we were not too sure that it will succeed. But after the first two programs, today uh, students are enthusiastically volunteering and taking part in it. And we are actually running it in multiple sessions in the evening nowadays. Uh, let me also say now that all these range of activities, you know, starting uh, uh, from these uh, weekly sharing sessions to um, other things, all these uh, have been possible and can be actually implemented in any college uh, only through a well-organized and uh, active value education cell. And uh, can I have the next slide, please? So this is uh, the kind of uh, value education cell that we have, uh, which is the right configuration for the value education cell in the institutions. So we have a group of about 10 uh, very sincere, dedicated and committed faculty, and also equal number of students from various departments. And uh, the activities, of course, uh, are led uh, by the coordinator, who in our case is Mr. Kupal Babu, who is himself a very a qualified resource person who's also about to get his PhD from IIT Delhi and he works under the guidance of our Dean Student Welfare. The, the, there are no, not too much of physical resources required for this cell other than uh, the normal sitting space for all these members and possibly a, a hall for conducting these uh, sessions in the afternoon. Of course the evening sessions for the students can be held anywhere else. The college is empty at that time. So, and the various responsibilities um, and activities of this VE cell, in addition to the sharing sessions that I mentioned earlier, they also organize uh, various levels of eight days FTPs uh, for faculty and students in our college, as well as supported in other locations. Can I have the next slide? So these are some of the activities of this uh, value education cell. Uh, we also uh, make them uh, involved in planning and smooth conduct of uh, this recently introduced uh, AICT's student induction program. And since these are all uh, uh, people who have undergone higher levels of courses, so the VSL also prepares in our institution PPTs and handouts and class notes for the UHV course, irrespective of which faculty is teaching that program. And they also centrally set the question papers for sessional tests and so on. So basically, uh, this V cell is very effective and useful and uh, are totally responsible for all the activities uh, related to human values in our college. So it is, it is important that at some stage, uh, all of us uh, start uh, thinking about establishing this V cell in our institutions. So the next slide shows uh, some of the photographs of the various activities done by the V cell the orientation program uh, for faculty members and so on. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the human values are not uh, instructional and in fact, uh, they're basically transformational. So these courses and workshops will create awareness, will sensitize people and initiate a process of uh, self-exploration. But um, as with any teaching, all these things will get forgotten and will not be uh, implemented or imbibed into their conduct unless we have a supportive environment. So towards creating a supportive environment in our institution, we have been uh, emphasizing good moral values, uh, ethics, and a positive attitude. We also uh, have made efforts to have very uniform and uh, transparent academic and administrative policies with completely unbiased and fair approach in our institution. And of course, we observe 100% purity in academic systems and have zero tolerance for indiscipline and unethical conduct. And by and large, we are a corruption free campus in all respects. And of course, we have various awards for 
good conduct, punctuality, and integrity, and so on. In addition to these, uh, to uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, to ensure harmony with the nature, uh, for uh, sort of inculcating a responsibility towards environment and harmony with the nature, uh, we have uh, made efforts in our campus. Can I have the next slide? So in our campus, our campus is completely a trash-free, green, and eco-friendly campus, as can be seen in some of these photographs. We also have a chain of uh, rainwater harvesting wells to uh, recharge the groundwater. We have sewage treatment plants to uh, reuse the sewage water for horticulture. And also, all our terraces are covered with uh, solar panels for heating water as well as for generating electricity. So all these uh, measures uh, go a long way and give the student an experience of uh, how to make optimum use of uh, natural resources uh, to recycle and also to live in harmony with nature. As regards uh, the civic and social responsibility, uh, can I have the next slide? So to make the students aware of their social responsibility, we undertake and involve our students in various social activities. Some of these are uh, like we run a primary school in our campus for the children of uh, labor. Uh, we have adopted a cooperation school and also a refugee camp in Delhi. And uh, we, we have been conducting for a number of years, even before this PMKY started, skill development programs for uh, uh, village school children uh, during our summer sessions. And most of these programs, even though not directly uh, uh, sort of uh, managed by the students, but students participate uh, whenever they are free in these activities. So now, Coming to the impact that it has had on our faculty and students, um, I will, can I have the next slide? So we do believe uh, that uh, it has had uh, all these uh, efforts of ours over the last 10 years to uh, integrate the, the value education as part of our system. have had a very um, wide ranging and to a large extent quantifiable impact on our students. So as can be seen, and we have noticed over so many years that uh, there is a focused and more sincere approach in academics as well, as well as other activities, uh, which has led to excellent performance by our students, some of which I mentioned in this slide. As far as the general conduct is concerned, uh, there is a very significant improvement in class attendance and punctuality. And all these are measured in our institution. Uh, Minor offenses also have reduced significantly from nearly 700 four years back to about 150 now. So the proctor's job is reduced. The major offenses like drinking, drugs, fights, misbehavior with teachers has also reduced to about one third. So by and large, uh, our effort uh, towards maintaining discipline and the general conduct of students, there is a marked improvement in that. We also noticed, uh, surprisingly, a very strong mentorship amongst our senior students for the juniors. So now in our institution, our seniors are actually conducting uh, tutorial and doubt clearing sessions. Uh, it is part of our uh, regular timetable in the college. And also they conduct um, uh, C++, Java and other courses in the, on the weekends for the first year students, the non-CSIT students. We also noticed that uh, students are voluntarily involving themselves in many social activities as well as supporting the college in, for example, running the hosting libraries and so on. We also noticed uh, marked reduction in wastage. They are more aware. So there is uh, much reduction in food and electricity wastage. And uh, finally, uh, for whatever reason, uh, most probably because of uh, these efforts, We've, we've been receiving very positive feedbacks from the corporates, not just on their professional performance, but uh, mostly on their conduct and stability and so on. As regards uh, the faculty is concerned, uh, it has had uh, impact, of course, with 90% of our faculty having undergone this program has also had an impact of them, impact on them. And most of those people uh, have said, uh, you know, that uh, 
they, they see, they believe that their stress level has reduced and uh, there is a marked improvement in their temperament. Can I have the next slide? So these are the impacts on uh, faculty. I've said uh, transformation and contagious. That is to say that uh, the initial reluctance of faculty to involve themselves, it just uh, dissipated and uh, they all got motivated when they saw the positive impact on the faculty who are more intensely involved in this program. And uh, as I mentioned, they all uh, reported that their temperament has improved. Their relationships with their peers and students have improved uh, to a large extent. And uh, to some extent, they have a higher sense of belongingness, uh, which is reflected in their willing acceptance of additional responsibilities in the college. And uh, of course, the faculty stability in our institution is very, very high. We got uh, faculty members who are there from the first day that the college started in 98, uh, serving us till now. And I think about 40% of our faculty must be more than 10 years old, which is quite okay for self-financed institutions. Finally, a few words about our university as to how uh, uh, this entire program got uh, so effectively implemented in the large number of institutions. There are 600 colleges affiliated to Dr. APG Abdul Kalam Technical University. And um, this is uh, primarily, I'll, can I have the next slide? So this is uh, how the university went about implementing this program in so many institutions. So starting with the value education cell at the university itself, the, there are seven, eight uh, designated modal centers, regional modal centers, we are one of those and also about 50 modal centers, mainly to decentralize the activities for very uh, effective implementation of the value education programs in the large number of colleges that we have. So uh, very briefly, uh, the VE cell at the university, uh, for example, is headed uh, by none other than our vice chancellor himself. And uh, it has a very active uh, dean of value education and also a highly qualified coordinator, Bhanu Pratap Singhji. In addition, the VSL also at the university has its own board of studies, you know, like we have for different engineering uh, programs. There is a board of studies uh, as part of the VSL at the university and also a committee for preparing advanced courses in value education. And uh, the eight models, uh, regional model centers and the 15 model centers, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, also support uh, the function of uh, the university's value education cell and the criteria for uh, selecting these institutions other than a little bit of infrastructure in terms of seminar halls or number of resource person is uh, primarily their interest and inclination and willingness of their management to sort of support other colleges to be able to develop uh, a pool of dedicated uh, resource persons and uh, to to be able to support other institutions. This decentralized structures in a very strong uh, and a proactive VE center of the university has been extremely effective in implementing this uh, program. And I would recommend that uh, every large university should have a similar kind of decentralized system. So as I mentioned, as one of the eight regional nodal centers, I'll just uh, specify and give an idea of what all activities a nodal center is expected to do. So can I have the next slide? So as a, a regional nodal center of the university, we have conducted uh, 10 full-fledged eight days of faculty development programs at our own college from basic level one to advanced level three for over 450 faculty members and about 130 students of various colleges affiliated to our university. So within our institution, we've been able to train about uh, nearly 600 uh, faculty and students through this eight days workshop. In addition, of course, the resource persons that we have and the co-facilitators, they've been deputed uh, by our university to conduct the workshops at various other places also. And uh, we have also dedicated uh, one full-time faculty for coordination work at uh, the AICT. So finally, um, uh, let me uh, conclude by saying that uh, our efforts over the last 10 years to integrate this value education 
at all levels, uh, in my opinion, has had a very positive, a very uh, wide-ranging impact on, I think, almost all facets of our college activities, performance, uh, our general level of happiness. And though there is uh, still a long way to go always, and we have uh, very many plans for the future, uh, we have, to a large extent, uh, succeeded uh, in progressing on our journey uh, to make uh, our college uh, a true living model. And I would just quote, uh, if you can see the last slide, a very beautiful definition of success uh, is uh, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people, to earn the appreciation of honest critics, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, and finally, to leave the world a bit better. So that is what we believe we want to achieve. So thank you very much uh, once again for uh, giving me this opportunity and also the patient hearing. And if there are any clarifications, I'll be very happy to answer or to make an attempt to clarify.